Hello, welcome to this bite-sized webinar. My name is Elaine Tugut. I'm Head of Architecture at the Concrete Centre. And in this short talk, I'm going to explain how exposing the concrete structure of a building can be a material design decision and also help towards a low carbon strategy for your building. So what do all these buildings have in common? All have exposed concrete structure on the insides. It's pretty obvious actually from looking at the pictures, but they are also all certified as having outstanding environmental sustainability credentials in that they all achieved outstanding in the BRE environmental assessment measure. So BRIAM, you might know that as. Now the exposed concrete structure played a key role in achieving those credentials. Now, if you want to find out some detailed guidance specifically on scoring in BRIAM using concrete, you can download our guidance document for free. See it in the bottom right hand corner there from the Concrete Centre website. But let's run through the key benefits now. Firstly, and probably most fundamentally, the thermal mass of concrete is integral to that low energy use of those buildings. Uh, it's helping to significantly lower that carbon footprint over its whole life. Thermal mass and nighttime cooling has got a, has a proven role in reducing energy loads for heating and cooling. And in these buildings, principally, that was through reducing or omitting the need for air conditioning. So it does this by evening out the peaks and the troughs of the internal temperatures. So you can see that on the, the, the wavy graph that's there. Now, how does it do this using concrete? Well, it's using the exposed radiant cooling of that concrete surface on the inside of the building. Uh, that concrete surface can be painted, of course, but the critical aspect is the contact uh, between the air and the surface of the concrete to optimise the thermal mass effect. Uh, our guidance document there, Thermal Mass Explained, goes into this in more detail. Nighttime purge cooling is absolutely essential though. It usually happens through natural ventilation. So that's the ability to cool that structure down of an evening. But thermally uh, active buildings are becoming more common in the UK, are usually embedding water pipes, uh, sometimes air to, to help cool that slab. Now an exposed concrete soffit is especially useful way of uh, bringing thermal mass into a building. And by soffit, I mean the exposing the underside of the concrete to the room below. So the underside of a concrete floor, uh, it becomes a ready-made ceiling. Now this is effective because it's usually a very large area. It's equidistant from the occupants. And there's often also sufficient depth of concrete there. This is what you need to be able to take you through some of the warm spells to get you enough cool in the structure. Now, by designing out air conditioning equipment, there's also some potential embodied carbon savings. Uh, these are estimated by SIBSI at about 50 kilograms per meter squared. Now, this is a saving that also then accumulates through the life of the building as the expenditure on repair and replacement of the air conditioning kit is avoided. So over the whole building's life, this can actually add up to be quite significant. And this illustration comes from our guidance document, Whole Life Carbon and Buildings, which I suggest is another core cool guidance document worth looking at on this subject. But quite apart from that thermal comfort provided by the thermal mass, it's worth pointing out that a building, if it's designed uh, to be naturally ventilated, is very likely to have a narrow, foot, narrow footprint. And this provides other potential benefits, uh, opportunities for opening windows, great daylight factors and views out, so giving connection to nature. Now, these are all recognised as desirable for healthy internal spaces. And of course, there's also potentially the opportunity for taller floor to ceiling heights. By avoiding those suspended ceilings, you can achieve this uh, taller height with the same structure that you would have been providing. But concrete is also a naturally inert structure. By that, I mean it doesn't off gas any air pollutants uh, it's and so therefore it's supporting good indoor air quality increasingly recognized as something we should be considering the amount of time that we all spend indoors now it doesn't contain any formaldehyde in that concrete or volatile organic compounds or VOCs now these are um, air pollutants often found in uh, interior finishes and furnishings and of course by exposing that frame you've avoided uh, the places where these would be as well 
Of course, if you do decide to paint or seal that surface of the concrete, which is, of course isn't necessary, you don't need to do that on the inside of a building, uh, but if you do decide to do that, there are low or no VOC coatings available. So revealing the surface of that structural concrete optimizes thermal mass potential, avoids the needs for linings and coatings and ceilings, and uh, apart from also avoiding the risk of pollutants in the air, reduces the amount of just stuff that we need to make that building safe. Now, the reason why this is possible using concrete is because of its inherent durability, fire resistance, and even acoustic performance. In many situations, there's no need for additional linings or coatings to meet the minimum standards required of the building regulations. And of course, this brings long-term benefits as well in terms of maintenance, but also reducing the risk that people inadvertently might alter some of those essential fire linings during occupation. So it's potentially a fire safety issue too. I thought it worth putting in a quote here that I found from Paul Monaghan's interview in Concrete Quarterly a few years ago, and he was uh, talking on the subject of robustness and maintenance. Um, he said, uh, I was looking, talking about schools, uh, Westminster Academy, uh, one of their projects, uh, from a few years ago, it says it looks the same as it did 10 years ago. If the walls had been painted, it would have looked knackered. <laughs> and, uh, high, um, and so robustness and maintenance is especially important in areas of high wear and tear, like a school, but also in reception areas and uh, uh, other similar building spaces. Uh, Paul said that, um, of reference to another project, which I think was an office, he said it's 15 years old, but it looks brand new. The more concrete you have in a building, the more it looks the same every time you see it. So durability, this brings us to another significant benefit of concrete, uh, particularly for the circular economy. And that's because its ability to have a long life. You might not be aware that an internal concrete frame designed to achieve 50 years durability requires no additional resource or design requirements to achieve a predicted durability of 100 years. It's almost like a buy one, get one free. And there are plenty of examples of concrete frame buildings that are being retrofitted today, being reused, new life being breathed into them, make good use of that existing structure effectively recycling the whole building in situ. And that's much more energy and carbon efficient than dismantling the building for reuse elsewhere. And it's in this way that uh, concrete can uh, contribute to a circular economy. There's also many ways of designing in concrete, uh, uh, having a lean approach, so using less stuff. So there's a wide range of uh, online resources available at the Concrete Centre for structural engineers, architects and designers, including training courses and publications. So please do look at that. It includes detailed guidance on um, reducing uh, carbon footprint of concrete, including the new uh, concept design tool as well. So please look at that at concretecentre.com. <laughs>